go. Okay, so we will start our online webinar. Before everything, I will do a long introduction of everyone, every speaker, I mean. So, start with uh, Professor Dr. Joy D. Bhattacharya. I hope I pronounced it right. Originally coming from India. It's coming from India, so it's Asia family. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Joy Deep is a professor of psychology. Over the last two and a half decades, he has been fascinated equally by the challenges to understand ever changing brain waves and the spectrum of complex behavior, what makes us human. How do we experience emotions while listening to music? What is its nature? Can music be promote health and well being? How do we solve problems? What happens when we have an aha moment? I was obsessed with this aha moment. That's why I came here to London to study. How do we create? These are some of the issues he has been currently investigating. Importantly, he focuses on the brain. He has published over 100-ish peer-reviewed research articles. This is just so much, you know, 100. I think this is like a world record almost. <laughs> so he's definitely my idol. His research findings have regularly been covered by medium outlets within the UK, like BBC, Sky, Time, Times, New Scientist, and outside UK, which is coming from Economist, Wall Street Journals, Scientific American. So he likes to think that his brain is always open. So this is really, really important. So as for Mr. Grab a request, he's my teacher and great friend for almost 11 years. So all the speakers today are basically my teachers. So I'm really, <laughs> I may say something stupid. Please correct me because you are my teachers. <laughs> okay. So uh, personally selected and endorsed by master teacher Seth Riggs to be his associate in 1991. Greg Eric is regarded by several entertainment professionals to be the most effective and commercial vocal technique instructor in Las Vegas. He travels throughout the world as a guest lecturer and teacher in vocal therapy and singing technique. So actually what he's teaching is like covered a lot of things. He has successfully coached hundreds of singers, dancers and actors in every aspect of musical performance. So what are they? Who are they? He was a special contracted vocal consultant for Columbia Records, those big names in the music industry. And also he has the opportunity to work with Britney Spells, Britney Spells, Baby One More Time Tour, with Celine Dion's creations to Dragon. In the area of popular music, many of his students are currently working production deals with uh, great giant persons such as David Foster and Quincy Jones. These are really, really big guys in the music industry. And then is our lady, Professor Dr. Alegria Oferio. She is a professor in voice and music theater at the University of Philippines College of Music. She also studied at the Mozartum Hochschule für Musik. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> here because it's written in German, so I speak a little bit German. At the University of Salzburg from Austria. So you guys share something similar because Joy also worked in Austria for quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very long time. So this is like life is amazing, which can bring all us together here. And the doctor, um, Professor Allegria obtained her doctor in public administration. See, from the Polytech University. He tackles numerous disciplines in the arts, an international opera stage director, a singer, an actor, a culture and the art specific, a special television host. So actually what is amazing for her, 
She is awarded as the Alif Awards Hall of Fame in the category of Female Classical and included in the Culture Center of the Philippine Encyclopedia of the Arts. The Alif Awards is given to recognize excellence in Filipino talents. So here we met a talent. Here it's very lucky for us to meet all together. As an opera stage director, she has staged the full team for. Lens operas and musicals. Yes, that is my super long introduction for our great speakers for today. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So actually, the、uh, uh, our webinar today, the main topic is flow. Actually, I just came across you no know, this flow concept not very long. But I really obsessed with it. So that's why I started like a project called Singing Flow. So later, you guys will have the chance to fill in our questionnaires there. And this project is also supervised by Professor Joy. So flow is really important. It's a concept first like raised in around the nineteen seventy five ish. So before everything else, I think it's very important to figuring out. What is a flow? So here is a little definition. In positive psychology, a flow state, also known as being in the zone, I think as singers we all have that feeling. Is when you are entering into the room, you really feel something is different. Yeah. Also known as being in the zone. Highlight there. Is the mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of activity. In essence, flow is characterized by the complete absorption in what one does and the resulting transformation in one sense of time. Okay, so that is the official definition. So I would like to know from our speakers. What is your definition of the flow? Maybe we start with Joy. Would you, <laughs> since you are the definition expert, maybe you can come first. Okay.、Yeah. Thank you very much, Going. So、yeah. it, it's a privilege to be in the company of distinguished other speakers, and also thanks for every. Yeah.、Uh, thanks to others for joining.、Uh, yes, it is a kind of interesting question you ask.、So, Uh, so what is flow? I mean,、uh, you ask for my definition. Yes. I would kind of rephrase a bit because you know, the scientist, being、uh, as a practicing scientist, we、uh, really give a lot of thought and definition. And here, the concept of flow is actually quite a very interesting aspect because this is something we, which we all, somewhat extent, has a personal connection. But it has been, or earlier times, it was quite tricky to define, and that's also one of the reason. Although the flow as a concept was introduced in 1970s, as you say, that it was not accepted by the, for example, the traditional psychologist,、uh, because they thought that this is too complex to study, this is too kind of difficult to define. And actually, there are too many definitions. So, I would not give you my definition because that would not make the. I would say make the problem. Make make the problem easier, right? Which which will make、exactly. it more complicated. <laughs> actually, what I would mention because you did mention a kind of one definition which is a bit long worded. Yes. I would give it a rather short definition. Yes. Which. At least covers the key topics. So here, flow is an intrinsically rewarding state of absorption in a task in which control feels effortless. So there are key points here. First, it is extremely rewarding, and the second, one gets completely absorbed. And the third, it is related with a task, and the fourth, there is a sense of control. And finally, all this control comes very effortlessly. One usually, often, 
we have to exert a lot of effort to be in control. But this is a state which is highly rewarding where people are in full control, but this comes without having excessive effort. Hmm. Okay, I will stop here. <laughs> yes, that's very accurate definition. That's why I asked Professor Joy to start because he's the expert on that part. And then who want to be the next? Maybe uh, Greg, you want to come with your definition? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this and um, talk about somebody in terms of academia being the least qualified to be a part of a, a, a presentation like that, like this. It's certainly myself, but um, I, I deal with flow on a regular basis and um, you know, and I know that we all do as well. I, I, it's almost as if in my world, you can substitute the word flow for natural. And, you know, so again, that idea of doing something natural, there are many, there are many uh, facets that make it up. And I think that's, that's where we run into a problem is because I'll, I'll try and approach it from the art form. Um, rather than, you know, I'll have everybody, obviously everybody's in their own lane. You know, Joy is going to speak to it from, you know, uh, his expertise. And I'll try and speak to it from my expertise. Um, I think that one of the um, features that goes into my expertise is that there's a sense of automatism and uh, a certain natural reflexive and adaptive state. Um, and, and I think... I would want to throw in um, another word that, you know, I don't mean to um, convolute the conversation, but, you know, in my world, which is more vocal and singing and the learning and the teaching of singing, um, one of the features that I'm looking for is non-compensation. Uh, non and so I know that that is sort of a feedback loop into what I was saying, because when you're doing something without compensation, you're really talking about a natural design. So you do, again, it, that word natural or flow kind of comes together. It's not the best definition, but we are talking about art, at least at least in, you know, from my perspective. Yeah. So I don't know if I can contribute anything more than bullet points rather than a real sentence. Yes, yes, you're right, you're right. Everyone has their own, like, major background. Yeah, what we can say is from our background, what you saw, that's why I, like, ask, like, what is your definition of flow? Because it's yeah, really, yeah, yeah. It's really, really, really <laughs> personal experience, but still there are some common things can be summarized from different... Absolutely. Experience. Yeah, everyone will figuring out what is there, something common. Then now maybe we listen to Sister Alegria there. Yes. So, well, yes. Uh, first of all, good morning, good evening, good afternoon <laughs> to all our, uh, our viewers uh, all around the world. And thank you very much for this opportunity of uh, being here and being on the same platform as this uh, wonderful gentleman who I've met for the first time today. Okay, what is the, the, my definition of flow? Yeah. <clears throat> well, flow in the context, in the practice and dynamics of a singer, and in particular music uh, theater. And when I say music theater, it can be Western concept of opera, Broadway, or Asian music theater, so Chinese kun or Beijing, Beijing opera, or the Japanese no and kabuki, a Polynesian music theater, uh, African-based uh, ritual based um, action of having a music, a text and dancing and uh, or the South American Asian music theater linked to again rituals where there are no band boundaries like there are no audience, there's no performance. They could be the audience, could be the actors, there could be the performance. And then the, the traditional uh, rituals, which are also uh, performances of different continents around the globe. All of them have flow. Flow in the definition of, uh, of singers 
or a music theater singer is being in character or being in the character, meaning to be a particular um, someone's character and personality. And the nearest way to be in that character is to find similar traits, no matter how small, but enough to link it with that persona and be it when performing is our definition of flow. So really the flow for us singers is truth. You have to be truth. You have to find that link so that you will no longer be acting. It is already yourself. And if you can be in that um, uh, mindset, then everything is picture and uh, audio perfect. So uh, having said that, being in full concentration and involvement is supported by the main elements of drama in the context of Greek drama or opera. No? A ritual supported by music is in fact easier, in my opinion, as with other disciplines. Imagine, we already have the text, we already have the music, and we have the action. We are so guided. All we have to do is, you know, have that uh, well of course we need to have that technique but then again if we just you know tell ourselves i am it i am he i am she then there's no more question we are in it so in the end it is facile which is easy but on the on the other hand this is difficile very difficult, complicated, and nerve-wracking. And I think this is what the, uh, the research is all about, is how to, uh, to analyze what makes uh, anxiety for singers. No? So many things happening, all in the memory work of languages we are not even uh, native of. Music and acting, we should be synchronized and above all this. The sound should be beautiful and pleasing to the ears. And we have to look good on stage, okay? Put them all together in one imagery, a uh, picture, sound perfect, and it's very challenging, especially in this technology era, ultra postmodern era, when we have so many things in mind happening, what is happening to the world? And then here I am trying to make beautiful music presenting to the world. How, how can we uh, compartmentalize all this? and uh, be what we are and be who we want to be and seeing how we want to sing, okay? So uh, how do we keep them with us and gross in our world for three hours? Three so the hours. concentration span of people yeah. shortened immensely. Yeah. Like, it, uh, like uh, uh, um, you know, uh, an adult may have only a concentration span of what, 20 minutes? Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, flow has been there from the beginning of mankind. That is, why, that is why we are here, where we are now, because of the, that focus to develop. So, so uh, in my, uh, hell, I'm not even a psychologist, but you know, I've covered so, so many definitions already. I will leave it to, to the new. <laughs> You're getting lost in the artistry world, right? So I leave yeah. it all up to you, neuroscientist. <laughs> yes, Joy, you want to say something on? Yeah, so, yeah. Just I thought, kind of integrating. It is kind of so fantastic to hear this kind of views from from yeah from outside academic. You know, one is outside from, yeah, academic, from different background academic, people. At the yeah. same time, that can be nicely integrated. I will just highlight two points. Yeah. Actually, Greg mentioned to him the flow is a very much with automatization, right? And actually, there is a one predominant theory of flow, which is exactly related with that, psychological. Usually, the theory suggests or the proposes that usually when we are at the beginning to learning a skill, we need to pay a lot of attention. We have to pay explicitly attention. As we acquire more and more skill, as we become expert, then we, then we do not need to allocate attention explicitly, because then everything is taken care of by implicit processing. And there has been some evidence suggesting that it could be, okay, the flow, uh, it is somewhat extend kind of transfer 
from explicit processing to implicit. Implicit is something when things are going on more as an automated fashion. We do not need to be really pay attention. For example, you are driving, we are not paying at, okay, everything attention. So but at the beginning, when you learn, of course, we have to be very careful, everything we have to pay full attention. But once we learn it, then things flow effortlessly. So that's, I was thinking just to mention, to relate, actually there is a one dominant theory of flow talking the terms which just exactly what mentioned by the Greg. Hmm. And the other one, the allegory, I just highlight again, the focus on one, one sentence phrase she said, if I can highlight that, that to her the flow for the singer, flow is literally being the, being the character. And this is also one of the key dimension of flow. It is loss of self-consciousness when the performer mm. and the performance merge. So that's also one of the classical signature of being in the flow. So when an actor is merged with the action, then actor loses this, uh, this, this kind of loss of self-consciousness. And that's also considered one of the hallmark of flow state. So again, <laughs> although we are coming from the different disciplines, yes. but there are still mm. a very- I, I have a question. Yes, I, I have a question in regards to both of those two points. Yeah. Are, yeah. are they um, third person noticeable? Are they things that um, you as a scientist you can recognize the demarcation from when someone is attempting to do something and something becomes automatic, or when someone is attempting to be something versus when somebody is something. Is there some, is that, are those two different types of states, almost binary? It, it, can it be expressed and seen third person? Yeah, yeah, you can, of course. I mean, depends on, okay, I mean, whether you want to, for example, in the very simplistic cases, if you want to measure, okay, uh, uh, the degree of attentions that we need to pay, that's usually a currency. Of course, uh, uh, this can be easily, for example, uh, almost like decoded from the brain activities or even by observations of the psychophysiological signals. Because take a very simplistic example. So if uh, the one of the characteristics of flow usually when there is an optimal challenge, means the task that you're performing and the skill set you have, they're quite nicely balanced. Mm. Right? That's usually or considered one of the key conditions for flow. And let's take the uh, one extreme. Say task is too easy. Then what happens? Then the, the actor or the performer, they're not sufficiently engaged. They get bored, right? That, Mm -hmm. And there are, of course, there are very clear indications to, to find out when someone is at the ball. On the other extreme, say, for example, task is too challenging. Then the performer becomes frustrated because he, whatever, doesn't matter, whatever he do, it's a too difficult, too out of his or her comfort zone. So, so this is possible to have, even if you take these three kind of endpoints. Yeah. One hand, for example, is, is the frustrations when the difficulty is too much. On the other extreme is the complete boredom when the expertise is way, way higher than, than yeah. the challenge. And in between, there's a sweet spot. So when the challenge of the task is just matched mm -hmm. with your skill level and that's where flow happens. And there are neural and physiologicals and other signals by which you can differentiate at least these three broad domain. And now if you're asking the question, is it possible to really mark the transition going into the flow? <laughs> not yet. Science is not there yet. But if, if I were to show you, if I were to show you three different states of a brain, would you be able to identify where they are in reference to those three different states? That is to certain extent possible if, okay, again, wow. it's our preliminary stage, it is certain extent possible. 
Yeah. Wow. Now all we have to do is see if we can create that to be like something somebody wears on their wrist. So we could just look at them from afar and like see if an they're Apple paying watch. attention. Like an Apple <laughs> watch, and then, you know, Apple watch, <laughs> like a digital watch, and then you're there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we have to move on with the questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> move on with the question. Let's get something like really easy and simple. Like, have you ever been experienced a flow? Tell us a little bit of your flow story, like a detailed flow story. Everyone has their own flow story. Yeah,、uh, maybe Alegria, sister, you want to go? Well,、uh, on a very、uh, personal yeah、um, experience. Yes.、Uh, as a child. Uh, when I was in the elementary, I was not even ten years old. I was scoliotic, very、I、had a very bad case of scoliosis, and at the time,、uh, technology was not yet very advanced. And、uh, I was very fortunate that my parents gave me the choice of、uh, having to go under the knife or、um, suffer. So that was my very first experience of flow. I said,、uh, "I will not take the chance." But in my mind, I believe that wherever air is flowing, it can go any part of the body.、So、like air flow. <laughs> air flow. <laughs> air flow. So that was the time that I、uh, forced myself to every day. Just lie down, relax my mind, not think of anything, and just think of that air flow.、Hmm. Trying to、uh, put a line, my spine. Yes, actually. And at my age, and at my age now, I haven't had any、hmm. uh, problems with my spine. So、oh, I was saved by that by that、um, power, that mental power. To allow that air to do something about my spine, because I was still young, you know, we,、yeah. we can still, you know, align it、uh, naturally, and、uh, I'm very happy the, to say and very proud to say that up to now,、uh, I still haven't had any anything under the knife, and、uh, my back is still straight. That's no、nice. back problem. I was talking about back problem. Professor Joy also has back problem. Problem. He has like a bamboo spike. He said, "Like so." Actually, here's the question for Joy. It is said flow is highly related to happy life, like well-being. So, do you think flow can be transferred from your typical flow state? For example, I'm singing. While I'm singing, I feel really happy. I'm entering into the flow. Is this flow can be applied to other aspect? Aspect of daily life, let's say, is that possible? Well, of course, of course. There has been a quite a considerable body of evidence. People do experience flow-like state in the various daily situations, and in fact, the data suggest,、uh, including our own, that the flow in daily life is quite positively and quite largely correlated. With the flow in specific activities, and this might suggest that could be that in, we or individuals or some individuals are possibly more prone to flow. So that could be the reasons they have flow, for example, during singing, as well as they have flow during in other daily activities. However, interestingly, there are distinctions. So it's not that this these two flows they might be similar, but there are also differences. Say, for example, what we found, which was some other groups as well, that the, for example, the flow in specific activities、uh, is less predicted by the personality. On the other hand, flow in the daily life is more correlated with some personality attributes. On the other hand, flow in specific activities. Is usually more correlated with the amount of training you have.、Mm -hmm. uh, another another interesting kind of nuggets of information I can give you in this context 
So we found recently that, for example, anxiety, it is known that anxiety is the antithesis to flow. They're always strong, negatively correlated. And interestingly, we found that the daily flow has a much larger negative correlation with anxiety as compared to, for example, anxiety, how it is correlated with the flow in specific activities. Hmm. So kind of in short, yes, it is absolutely possible, not just possible, people do experience flow in, in actually various situations, just like Allegria said. So, uh, and this all, if you are, for example, also, uh, learning a specific skills, music, arts, dance, and others, the amount or likelihood of flow that you experience on the specific skill, these two are related. However, there are certain kind of nuances that distinguishes the flow in the daily life compared to the flow in specific activities. Yeah, thank you. So now we already know flow can be applied to daily life. Let's find the first flow and then maybe apply it to the daily life. But according to the flow state, there's like a balance between the challenge and the current technique, which Joy and Greg also has been discussed. Like how, so how would you break and reset up, reset up the balance? So always you meet the balance, and then you break the balance, you set up another balance, and then you just challenge yourself. So I want to ask you, Greg, what is your biggest challenge until now? And in that case, you feel more pressure or, motiv or more motivated by that. Oh, my goodness. Um, I experience flow on a daily basis, and um, I'm quite aware of it. And one of the manifestations of flow in my work is cooperation. And so when I'm working with a student and I feel that there isn't a cooperative nature going on, I feel that my flow has not been established. I don't feel that flow is taking place. So I experience flow purposefully every hour on the hour when I'm working, because that's that's my job. I'm looking for that flow, not only the uh, me establishing some sense of physical flow state with the person that I'm working with, but also within myself, because I know when I've, I'm in that flow, I, I can sort of induce it in in the uh, student that I'm working with. So to kind of kind of get to your to your question, um, the challenge. I, I think part of it, oh my God, I scared Joy away. He was like, I can't take this. Um, <laughs> no, 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 kidding. I think it has, had, has some water. Okay, fine. But I, but I think, I think my awareness of it um, is also, you know, what triggers it for me is that I'm aware that I'm looking for that sense every hour that I'm working with someone. So when I get into situations where, like, this is potentially a you know a, a nerve-wracking situation this this conversation yeah because there is there's some sort of anxiety involved because you know i'm i'm used to dealing with people individually or in a group that i'm in control of so to speak and so it's hard to establish a flow like this but but i can tell when i'm getting one and i can tell when i'm not and so that's that's sort of like to answer your question um I'm used to doing it multiple times a day. And I'm also used to inducing it multiple times a day with people. So I, uh, there's a self-awareness for, for me, self-awareness, but there's also an awareness of myself as I'm inducing it in someone else. And so I, I can, I'm, I'm participating it on both sides. So you are challenging yourself at every moment you're teaching daily basis and then enter into the flow and then challenge a flow, challenge flow. So you're, you're absolutely. Like, yeah. Something like that. So because you, it's like, a, it's like a tennis match where, you know, we're not purposely trying to beat each other. We're purposely just trying to keep the ball in play. Hmm. Oh, so it's like back and forth, back and forth, we just yeah. play around something like that. Okay, thank you. That's a very nice answer. So here's a question from Professor Alegria. Like since flow is an amazing state we may all want to have, it is also very important during rehearsals. 
and performance. So, is there any exercise we can use in the music classes to achieve flow? Like whether flow can be trained in some way. For example, when we do the singing, group singing, is there any difference between group singing flow, like versus solo singing, like you are singing by yourself? Like which is better to activate the flow? Maybe I want to listen. To the answer from Allegraph first, then we can come up with other opinions. Okay.、Um, yeah. Flow for us is a a way of life. Can I be heard? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes.、Uh, so for us, the concept of flow is and how to achieve it is highly cultural. What may be、uh, good for one、uh, one group of people. May may not work for other groups of people. So、uh, there you go. It's it's highly cultural. And uh, since uh, uh, you are the experts on the psychology of flow to a person's behavior or how a body reacts, one's flow is natural and regular. No, in modernist view of education, there is only one arrow that leads to the proper or correct flow, but modern postmodernism is assessed otherwise. No, from a crystal point of view, each side or angle can lead to the center, can lead to the flow. So,、uh, for us uh, pedagogues, uh, actors, singers,、um, directors, we allow each one individual to find his or her own flow. No. So each angle is actually correct. Yeah, Greg, you want to come to... up with? I see your like highlight there because you're all like a singing teacher in some way. No, I love that. I, I I absolutely adore what she's saying. I'm just cheering her on silently. <laughs> oh, silently. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this may be right. This may be wrong. But yeah, this is how、uh, how I do it. So it's culture would dictate. If a flow is dynamic, correct or not, no, we are not to judge which flow exercise is to be appropriated to students or to a class. Like there are different studios and techniques on how to properly sing and project a voice. For example, okay, we are now、uh, looking at the the physical flow, the physiological flow, and wh what we are discussing now is the mental flow or how to sustain that what we have learned. Uh, technically, no. So、uh, that is one way、uh, to be in the zone. Other put a lot of、uh, emphasis on breathing and body alignment, and rightly so. There has to be a smooth flow or passage for the air to come out freely in and out from the body. That would determine the power intensity spin, pitch of the voice, for example.、Uh, that is another dynamic dimension or the dynamics of flow. Another is to find the balance from the lower body to the upper body. Now the importance of being able to flex the knees, to liberate the ribs, the the ribs, to strengthen、uh, both legs, to balance the left, right, back and forth, and so on and so forth. That is why we have voice lessons, hours and hours of practice. Because the, if we rehearse, then the, there will be a muscle memory. Okay, so how to relate to your props, costumes, mastery of music, mastery of、uh, of what you, your、um, uh, co-singer is doing, and how you relate to it, and how to transport it to your audience, is another flow, is another、uh, dimension of flow. No, so、uh, how can we do all that, and at the same time be truthful? To the role, I always go back to the truth, 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 truth. Because if one is truthful, then one doesn't even have to think, because that one is already it. Okay.、Oh, so how do you translate those? That's the truth. Yeah. Back to the truth. Back to the real yourself. Yeah. So、uh, music theater is is it's eclectic. It's a、uh, dyna dynamic. It involves so many disciplines, and all this happening in just one body, and one voice, without focus, without being in character, without flow. I do not know、mm. what would happen. 
Yeah, actually. So it's so complex. Everything happening and all the, the, the brain will have to process it. And at the same time, you have to look good. You have to be able to transcend. You have to be able to get your audience in your world, what is in your mind. But of course, you have the space, you, you have the stage, you have the set, you have the costumes, you have the music, you have the text, you have your, your technique, and you have all those people behind you who have helped you shape to be what you are now, everything behind you. And then all of a sudden, you will have to forget all of that and just be you. That's a lot of, uh, of focus. That's a lot of flow, but it is achievable in just one snap of a finger. I don't know if it's true, but That's, yeah, it's okay. possible. Okay, so the sign is just snap the finger. That's easy. Thank you. Thank you for the sharing. So as we are talking about the brain and nerves, I think now is the time to ask Professor Joy the question, like, do you think there is some brain region which is responsible for the flow state to appear? Or is it more dynamic, like globally, everywhere in the brain, or it's somewhere in the brain, or like different ages or different kinds of people may locate in the brain in different uh, for the flow state, it's just like dynamic. So how to capture the location? Yeah. Well, uh, there are no known hotspots in the brain that we can say, oh, this is because of this region, the flow happens. And that's not surprising because there is no activity that we do. It only activates one brain region, definitely not. So uh, that's not too uh, unsurprising, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I would go with, I mean, of course, currently the evidence are quite sparse and very, uh, and, and quite a conflicting evidence as well, because we are also dealing with a, a much complex construct and the one question which is very important uh, what are the, the the difference between domain general flow versus domain specific flow for example the flow allegria is talking about music theater yeah. if someone for example a scientist deeply absorbed while working on a problem are these two similar although we are using the same terms. Or for example, the, the type of flow Greg was referring to. So are there similar types of brain activities or similar characteristics that's across these domains? So these are the domain general, or, or it could be that there are, might be some brain activation patterns which are very specific to a specific domain. So this domain general, domain generality versus domain specificity, this is a very important question. I think we are not even scratching the surface yet there because, so these are aspects. And also whatever the little information or evidence we have, it's a quite a conflicting. I had, at the beginning, I mentioned this hypothesis of hyperfrontality when Greg mentioned this automatization, which is a very catchy hypothesis, which says that during flow, there should be down regulation of prefrontal cortex. And prefrontal cortex, which is usually the most enlarged part of the brain in humans. So this is the region usually controls, allocates attention, are usually in the, the seat of executive functions. And the theory says when, because the flow is often related with this, this let go phenomena that you lose as if you, you completely kind of let it flow without, without, without being judging, without applying an analytical. So that's the theory suggests then it could be then your prefrontal cortex, which is usually always judged, always the analytical part that must be suppressed. Otherwise, if that part is activated, you cannot enter into the flow. There are some evidence suggest that possibly, but again, there are actually more recent data suggest that's actually not the case. So for example, musicians, when they're improvising into the flow, there's this quite a strong activations in the in its prefrontal cortex. So there's also another hypothesis or another theory, which is which is called, uh, if I remember correctly, the synchronization theory of flow, which ex which expects there is a kind of networks 
there. So one network is the reward network. So because the flow is very rewarding, another network is the control network. And the theory suggests then this reward and control network, they should work in collaboration. And there are some latest evidence which provides some support. So anyway, so my point is we are not at all yet there to have a definitive answer. This is the brain activation patterns that indeed happens during flow because we still have to delineate this critical point. What are the factors that happen in a specific, for example, domain and what are the brain activation patterns, for example, that happens across domains. So hopefully in my view, in, in I think 10, 10, 12 years, we'll have a much better idea because the flow as a construct has been popular for the last 15, 20 years, but it hasn't captured the attention of neuroscientists. That's a very, very recent. Yes, so we are just begin to touch a little bit of the clearance of the reason, right? The real thing. Can I, can I ask a, yeah. may I ask a question? Yeah, sure. So Joy, in some ways, is it easier at this stage to say what flow is not than to define what flow is? <laughs> that is a very good question. Yes, that's we can okay. have a very good idea that what flow is not. So if, for example, one very defining nature is the flow should be highly rewarding. If you do not enjoy the activities, if you do not feel like going to the back to the activity, it cannot be flow. You should so have... flow is not so. So flow in many ways is not just the habit of waking up in the morning at six a.m. and brushing your teeth and doing it automatically. No. Someone may be rewarded by having clean teeth, but that's not that's not the same that, thing. That comes the next point. That. So, and the second one is actually you should be highly motivated to do that. There should be intrinsic motivation. That's usually the main currency of flow. There, you should be feeling you should get the reward just for the sake of doing it. So, actually, the, the those who introduced the concept of flow, he used a Greek term called autotelic. So, you are just getting the reward just out of doing it, not because that you want to win an external prize or something because you like doing it. And that's where the intrinsic motivation, that's where the fun part comes in. Yeah, that's very, very important. It's like you really love it and then the glory will come out by itself. So kind of going back to the example you gave, Greg, of course it is not flow, but in the hypothetical situation, if you are really extremely intrinsically motivated to brush your teeth, <laughs> if that experience is really extremely enjoying. And the third important point is, if you also find it quite challenging, but the point is usually the brushing teeth, it's a very automatic. There's nothing challenging at all. Then, so that, then brushing other people's teeth, that's very challenging. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, just kidding. <laughs> to add some, so you see, there's a lot of definitions. Uh, later on, people always can go back for our recordings because it's really, really, you know, like rich content is here. So I want to ask questions still. May I? May I ask a question? Yes, sure. Uh, doc yes, thank you, Mr. Yes, sure. Joy. We are now coming up with a very young five years old, six years old, seven years old, instrumentalist, pianist who just play really out of this world. And uh, with, you know, um, how do they do that? Do you think that they are exposed to the kind of flow that uh, you are discussing early on, that they are able to uh, achieve this competence? Mm this level of competence? It's a very important and fascinating question. However, the, the data on the flow in young children is extremely sparse. It's the main reason is it's a flow is usually uh, 
kind of is recorded by asking, by self-report. But for the young children, okay, they do not have this sufficient construct or sufficient knowledge to really define. Of course, that doesn't mean they don't experience it. It's only I'm telling the problem of difficulty just by observation that to, to quantify the nature and the presence of the flow in young children. And to your other point about the talent there, the role of talent, and, and that's an age or a question, the nature versus nurture. Interestingly, again, the research is quite not much there. Actually, we just published a paper last year uh, in the group of musicians, again, self-reported survey data, we found that uh, actually in our group, there's a one component, okay, which is, which we call the mindset, the growth mindset. You possibly come across that the, there's usually, there's a mindset people believe that through hard work, one can get better, right? So then one, we expected that this possibly having this learner's mindset might help to achieve more flow. But interestingly, we didn't find that. So interestingly, in our the sample of musicians, to be honest, paradoxically, so talent possibly, or believe in talent actually, played a much stronger role rather than the growth mindset. Because we thought at the time of doing the research, we thought the growth mindset would be more relevant. That the growth mindset means there's the people who believe the more work I put in, then, then I'd be better musicians and so forth. Interestingly, we found that having this growth mindset didn't predict for them to have a better flow. So on example, a fixed mindset in that case is paradoxically actually found to be kind of more related. But again, this is, as I said, this is a, uh, the data are, are very sparse, especially in the developmental aspects or because many reason is the measurement validity. So from just from the pure observation, it, it, we still do not have the very clarity or unambiguous way of defining the nature and the strength of the flow because the flow is at the end, it's a phenomenological experience there. Mm -hmm. And and that's why, okay, that's also, to be honest, even the data from the adult is also not always straightforward to analyze because depending on individual's definitions and individual phenomenological experiences, it can differ from subject to subject. So we still have a long way to go to find this objective signature, just as Greg mentioned at the very beginning, can we tell from the brain or the hearts and other signals that how, what is the nature of the current flow that I'm experiencing at this moment? That we can measure roughly a bit of attention, attention state, but attention is just a one bit in, the, in this equation, not everything about flow. Yes, that's very good. So challenge yourself, work harder, then you will go for flow, maybe. So questions for Greg, let's say. Now, since nowadays it is more international, people may speak several different languages. So they have their mother language, and then they have their second language. So this will lead to a more fused version of modern arts, including singing, painting, programming. Mm -hmm. Do you think there will be a difference between the local home culture flow and the international culture flow? Something like from I think like singing, if I sing a Chinese opera song and I can yeah. also sing an English pop song, I think personally, I feel a little bit different. What do you think? I, I agree. Um, it, it, it has, I know this is anecdotal, um, but it has been my experience that when you're working from the point of view of what is most culturally familiar to someone, they, they can learn things a little bit um, more quickly and more deeply. That is not to, not to deny that there are some people that um, it's equal to them, whether it's you know, within their culture or not their culture. But it's been my experience that um, when I have someone working on a song that is closer to their cultural awareness, it's always easier. Yeah, yeah, good. 
and, 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 and to be clear, because I know that this is what we're talking about, yes. to be clear, I am looking for, um, again, I, we picked such a tough word and topic. I am looking for a fluidity of when somebody is doing something with me, that there seems to be more of a habitualization rather than a decision making. I, I am looking more for that. Yeah. So also, I, I think the same question, uh, maybe I'll ask Alegria, since you are singing in different countries, you are like, you are singing in different languages. Do you feel that difference or it is because of like, just like training time? Let's say if we train ourselves like 10 years of English, so we can say English songs more fluently in the flow and then train ourselves into uh, in lesser Germany and then it will achieve to the same flow state. It's because of the training time or it's because of the culture. Can you feel the difference or they are the same for you? Um, number one, uh, identity is very important. Uh, in culture, we are all unique. It's like a, a circular process. So uh, to keep the interest is very important. Now we should always maintain to be interesting, to be unique, for that is what the art is all about. We, we, we have to research. We have to be unique in our research. So we, we have something to contribute to the society. So we should maintain being interesting and others will learn from our culture as we all learn from theirs. And that goes with the different um, uh, studios in uh, vocal pedagogy, different studios in acting and different uh, um, views on, on flow. <clears throat> now, what would I like to, uh, to make out of all this? So, social media is a powerful medium. We know that is happening to one another. So there is equity, there is leveling in the field and everyone should make use of this platform. I will know about uh, the different uh, techniques on how to produce a voice. I will learn new techniques on how to sing without in any position without having to compromise the quality of the voice. No? All our voices will be heard if you know how to shout out. So equity is a byproduct of social media. So let us make use of this to promote our culture, to know our cultures, to express ourselves, to learn new techniques and showcasting our, our, our talents. Then we go back to the purity of culture. There's fusion, there's merging, you No, know, like in colors, there's so many colors put together. And then after a while, we, we get bored by it. And then we go back to the primary colors. Then there, there is always a saturation point. Then we all go back to that purity. We go back to the, the basics, no? So uh, let's join, in, joy, uh, join into that joy, joy ride. <laughs> it is called cosmopolitanization, if there's uh, ever a term. And uh, I think we can all learn from it and make use of this of this platform. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I make sense, but that's what I do. <laughs> that's your trick. You tell me. <laughs> I, I like your saying like that. This is what you do. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And here comes the question in our chatting box there. We see like teacher Lu from, from China. Are you able to switch on the camera, ask a question, or I just recite your question there? Lu I would just translate or otherwise. So actually, he's typing that programming and painting are like his regular activities. You guys can also see in the chatting box compared with programming. He finds it easier to immerse himself in painting. For programming, the process of debugging the program make me make him feel not so smooth. So he's often get angry <laughs> at some very low level and stupid mistakes. Often only after achieving a specific function, he can feel a sense of achievement. According to his understanding, it seems that painting makes it easier for him to enter into the state of flow. His question is, is there any difference, different feeling caused by the difference between the two behaviors or activities? Or is this like 
his personal talent more suitable for painting than programming. So yeah, very long questions, but maybe Joy, I think you are the expert can answer this complicated question. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for this. Quite an interesting question. One yeah. could spend an hour on that. Okay. <laughs> we need another uh, one. Let's so go on a new webinar. I will just tell you briefly, although I have to stretch yes. a bit, it yes. because you did, of course, everybody's talking about flow, but you also mentioned another kind of instances, which is related to another very well-known construct in psychology, uh, which is sometimes often used in a competing way. It's called deliberate practice. So deliberate practice, because you mentioned when, when you are working on it and you find it quite effortful, you put a lot of attentions. Mm -hmm. So both flow and the deliberate practice are a competing candidates for skill acquisition, how people become experts. So deliberate practice is usually kind of leading the pack because this is a more stronger candidate, uh, how we become an expert in a particular skill or particular topics and others. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is this is a guy who is asking this question. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm all yes, now you prepared for the, the camera. <laughs> okay, now you're fine. So this is teacher Lu from Suzhou, a city near Shanghai. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I was just telling that the other one example you gave. So when you get quite doing very focused, low level, or even sometimes angry, because there you you have set a clear goal. You want to achieve that. You are also getting a supervised, okay, then, and you want to, and those processes are quite effortful. And those are not always rewarding. Mm. On the other hand, the flow is usually attention. So we talk quite a bit. Attention flows quite effortlessly and flow is quite rewarding. For acquisition of skill, deliberate practice is usually more efficient because you are usually practicing with a specific goal with a clear explicit feedback and often under supervision of a teacher or at least having a very clear goal but the flow is usually the as i mentioned the, the huge dip, main difference is flow is a very enjoy very rewarding there mm. And yes. intrinsically highly motivated. Of course, mm. deliberate practice, you also can have a high intrinsic motivations. So there is a quite a big debate, is there? And 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 which one would be more relevant? Actually, I, there is no one clear answer, depending on what you want to. Okay, for as I mentioned, for 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 example, learning a new skill or becoming an expert, then having a clear deliberate practice is more important because for example, singing, as Allegria mentioned, the singer spends hours and hours of practice. Not every practice session induces flow, unlikely. For example, a sports person where the flow is a quite common, they have to put hours and hours into the practice. And those are often, they get angry, they have a hard training. They can, I can, no one could claim that every practice sessions they have the experience flow, extremely unlikely in there. So there is a quite a strong component of very unpleasant, but very important, those kind of practice, our practice sessions that are needed to become an expertise. However, if the important point now here comes, so flow is like, if you do not experience flow at all, and if you're only experiencing this unpleasant, but still doing the labor practice, at some point you cannot continue because you miss the emotions, the reward aspect. The humans, we are biological, we are always looking for reward. Without these rewards, without this feeling good, that is how often we get it out of flow. We do not have this enough juice to stick to the long-term goal. So we do need both. There. <laughs> need That's both. The yeah, we need both. That's important. Thank, so, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Teacher, do you want to ask more on this question mm -hmm. or are you fine? Yes, I, I, it reminds me another uh, situation. I have some survey on my students. Uh, I asked them, uh, I tried to uh, get, um, uh, let them do some homework, two types of homework. One is painting and another is programming. <laughs> and I find they, their uh, 
they are not uh, good and both. They don't good and both. But and I ask them, uh, which do you like comparing the two behavior, comparing the two uh, skill? And I found that uh, is most of them like painting. I, so so I'm. It's I think it's a uh, interesting uh, phenomenon. And but, but I don't know the reason. Is the re it also uh, I, I'm pure curious about curious about uh, is it because uh, paintings is more uh, is, is a better <laughs> practice or it's I I'm doing some wrong teaching way in programming. <laughs> You're not doing anything. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, how to express a yeah. precisely of my question. Mm. Okay, so interesting. So people are also it's a very similar to my own quest question. Is yeah. that means uh, the two type of practice are different, very different, or is that means I make uh, some wrong, some uh, no efficient uh, way of teaching <laughs> maybe <laughs> we can like maybe we can do a project compare the programming flow and the painting flow and singing flow let's say everything yeah, yes. is there any difference between but thank you thank you for the question since it's a very long time i have to close if nobody is coming up with anything new because i'm the host i'm the timer lady here so so it is really great for our great speakers here to talk together, we will feel we are entering into a flow state of questioning each other. And we hope to do this more often later on, since this is the first like music science crosstalks. I hope to organize more crosstalks between the two fields because I am from the two fields myself. <laughs> so I want more people to talk to each other, which can also help myself to figure out out who am I so thank you for the speaker today it is a great pleasure to invite them to share with us their professional knowledge and their experience on music and science so there will be more things coming up later so thank you for everyone for waking up very early making up themselves at five o'clock with the chicken uh -uh, everything alarming there <laughs> and also stay very late here in in London with their fox saying hi and good night as neighbor. So actually we are all on the way, no matter it's like early or it's in the night, we are always enter into the flow, maybe easily. So to summarize everything together, I find out this sentence, nothing is, nothing is not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that is the method how to enter into it. Okay, maybe if there is anyone want to say hi, we are able to say goodbye. Is there anyone like a group photo? You can switch on your camera there. Uh, so yeah, switch on the camera, everyone. Maybe just saying a hi and good night, good morning, good afternoon, everything together again. Okay, if you guys wish to see a hi to all of us speakers, uh, I'm trying to speak in all the possible languages. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone who want to switch on their camera, saying a little bit hi to everyone, that would be so cool because the cold wind is still here. We should unite every human being together. Yeah. Oh, Frank there. Um, Emanuela. Okay, sorry. It's like sounds like Italian. So my sister. That is my so my sister there. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Oh, I think people are just doing their makeups, you know, because they're all in pajamas. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so we have this Tarumi Hockey. It's coming from Japan, I think. Right? It's coming from. Yeah, but I live in Hong Kong. Oh, you're living in Hong Kong. Yes, yes. With that name, you're living in Hong Kong. So you speak Kong. Kong Dong, then Kong Ba Ba Lo, Kong Yu Yu. Xiu 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 Ding, Cantonese. 
Okay, konnichiwa there. Ohayou gozaimasu. Okay, I'm trying. Ohayou gozaimasu. I'm trying to practice my language. I need more training in order to enter into flow in different countries. Okay, very nice to meet you all. Thank you for participating and join us. We hope to open more discussions between music and science and all the possible art forms later. Thank you very much. See you next time. Have a lovely day, night, dream, everything together. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.